Uh, good morning, everyone. So I hope you all had coffee and get ready. It's 9 a.m. Uh, we have a lot of stuff, uh, good stuff for today. So let's get started. Um, for the past few years, uh, for the past four years, we have been organizing tutorials on vision language pre-training and more recently on vision foundation models. This year is no exception. Uh, I'm Li Zhen Wang, and I'm honored to kick off the event today. If you are interested in the history and the background, I encourage you to check out our previous tutorial on the website. We have also compared the, two, the past two years tutorial into two survey papers. The survey paper in 2023 focused more on the vision language pre-training mm -hmm. and the survey paper on 2024 focused on the multimodal foundation model. Please take a look at them. The theme of this year is the recent advances in vision foundation models. The field has evolved very quickly in the past year. Our organizing committee have had extensive discussion on how to arrange the topics for today. We need to decide what need to be covered for the most recent approaches and the principles on the frontier of learning and applying the vision foundation models. I would like to share my understanding of how the vision foundation models have been evolving over the past few years. I want to uh, discuss with you three models. The first one is CLIP. The second one is large multi-model model, LMM. The last one is diffusion model. So I think the most fundamental question is how we, do we extract intelligence from visual world? So when we look back, CLIP still represent a paradigm shift when it was introduced in 2021. CLIP extract information at the intersection of image and the text, learning both an image encoder and text encoder at the same time. The past year has been marked by the rise of large multi-model model. Large multi-model model extends large language model with multi-sensory skills such as visual understanding to achieve stronger generic intelligence. The third model is um, diffusion model. We want you to pay close attention to diffusion model, not only from the perspective of image and video generation, but also, but also think it as a vision-centered representation learner. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with CLIP already. CLIP was a big paradigm shift at the time it was came out. Because rather than needing handcraft labels to train a good classifier, which is very time consuming and painful to do, we can leverage freeform text from the internet to learn a model that is simultaneous a good classifier for all domains. CLIP has pre proven to be an efficient learner to extract uh, intelligence from image text pairs. The past year was the year of large multi-model models. Here, I want to make connection uh, between the multi-model, the large multi-model model with the early vision language models. Early vision language models serve as the prelude to the LMMs. Actually, this slide is from our tutorial in 2022 and highlights the evolution of early vision language models from UNITER proposed in 2019 to Flamingo, COCA, and the GIT proposed concurrently in May 2022. I think this evolution also underscores why we initiated this tutorial series and continue to track advances in this exciting field for the past five years. In March 2023, OpenAI released GPT-4. The e-run of LMM starts from the GPT-4V model. In the paper, the down of LMMs, we analyze the GPT-4V model to deepen our understanding of this model. 
Obai acknowledged that the dawn of LMM's preliminary exploration of GPT-4V by our colleagues at Microsoft covers a plethora of practical observation and strategies of using GPT-4V. OpenAI has also included this paper in the GPT-4V body of work. In our exploration of GPT-4V, our focus has been using qualitative results to offer a snapshot of GPT-4V's capabilities and also the potential emerging user cases. Our objective is to uncover and preview what GPT-4V might already be capable of, even though some of the novel capabilities may not yet be fully reliable. From our study, we found that GPT-4V have significantly advanced the state of art in areas that are pulling computer, computer vision community, including zero shot open vocabulary, task unification, preformed image text interleaved input, and in-context learning. Here, I would like to highlight a few scenarios and new user cases that could be potentially enabled by the emerging capability of GPT-4V. For example, we know that pointing is one of the earliest hand gesture a baby learns to communicate. We found that GPT-4V can well understand the visual pointers directly drawn to an image. Based on this observation, we propose a novel method and action method named visual pointing. The core idea is to directly edit the image at a pixel space to draw visual pointers or sing text as a human referring instructions. GPT-4V comprehend the question and accurately respond that in the, I think in this result. So the, the blue arrow is pointing to the running shoe. It intuitively links objects indicated by the arrow to the respective uh, objects. Another, another emerging, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yeah, and there. It's um. Uh, yeah, it's back. Okay, yeah, we can continue. Um, another emerging capability is uh, coding with vision. So, uh, GPT four V can generate a Python code to reproduce a given line chart. <laughs> Also, we found that the GUI navigation is very interesting. We found that GPT-4V can interact with and navigate through graphical uh, user interface of a computer or a smartphone. We explored the potential of GPT-4V to complete, uh, complete complex tasks such as web browsing, online shopping, and responding to notification it can also handle incoming call and a message notification on a computer screen effectively. Also, when we test GPT-4V for the potential for embodied AI, we found that it can actively engage with dynamic physical uh, environment. To paint a clear picture, imagine GPT-4V powering a home robot. In this setting, the AI can interpret appliance operating instructions and perform task-oriented navigation through the house. After that, in the following months um, of the proposal of GPT-4V, we observe a surge of instruction tuned open source LMMs emerging as a new line of research. Today, the landscape of LMMs can be well tracked on the LMM leaderboard. As of last week, there are 30 open source LMMs and 21 proprietary LMMs listed on the MMMU leaderboard. On MMVAT, we also observe rapid progress daily and monthly. 
with the latest GPT-40 achieve a total score of 69.7, uh, open source models are also catch up quickly, can achieve a score, total score of 62.8. Here, I also want to discuss the, the I.O. modality of the new model released by OpenAI in May, the GPT-40. Well, the um, large multi-model currently extends large language model by adding the visual modality. It's natural to further extend the framework to include more modalities beyond the vision and the language. GPT-40 is a step towards much more natural uh, human computer interaction. It accepts as input of any combination of text, audio, image, video, and generate any combination of text, audio, and image outputs. It would be interesting to investigate what additional capabilities a model combining all these modalities could achieve beyond the current capabilities, and also how to make such native integration more effective effective so different modalities can enhance each other. LMM have also inspired new research areas such as visual prompting with its representative work on SOM and also multimodal agent for video understanding, audio description, GUI navigation as seen in MMVID, MM Navigator and MM Narrator as well as for visual design and creation with feedback as seen in ideal to image. Today, we will have five sessions on large multi-model models. Our five outstanding speakers will dive deep into various topics around LMMs, including LAVA and the latest progress on open source models delivered by Dr. Chen Yuan Li, LMM pre-training delivered by Dr. Zhe Gan, LMM fine-grained grounding by Dr. Hao Tianzhang, visual prompting by Jian Wei Yang, and the multimodal agent by Lin Jie Li. We also discuss diffusion model today. If we see LMMs are adding image condition to language generation, diffusion model are the opposite. Diffusion model is more like adding text condition to image generation. We believe diffusion models are also important to vision foundation models, not only from the perspective of image and video generation, but also as a vision-centered representation learner. A paper came out a while ago called Your Diffusion Model is Secretly a Zero-Shot Classifier. Mm -hmm. The basic idea is that even if you are modeling the distribution of image given text, the model can be converted into a classifier mo classification model. This approach is somewhat similar to CLIP. Given an image and a candidate caption, you can use the diffusion model to compute a score for how well the image matches the caption. While the method is more computationally expensive than CLIP, it provides a compatibility or similarity score between the image and the candidate caption. This paper demonstrates that stable diffusion can achieve good image net prop, which is a surprising result. In September 2023, DAI3 was released by OpenAI. Modern text to image system often ignores certain words or descriptions forcing users to learn prompt engineering. DAI-3 represents a significant leap forward in generating images that precisely adhere to the prompted text. Mm -hmm. We are very proud to be part of the DAI-3 team to work together with OpenAI on developing this model. The key takeaway from DAI-3 is that training on ultra-descriptive captions make the diffusion model more computer efficient, even when measuring the quality of samples produced with shorter captions. I would like to also quote Aditya's words here. It suggests, this observation suggests that we can get better unconditional models by using ultra descriptive captions as scaffolding, even if we don't use ultra descriptive captions at inference time.
in the past year, diffusion models have also made a significant advancement in vi video generation, progressing from low resolution to high resolution, from four second clip to one minute long video with character identity preservation, coher coherence improvement, 3D consistency. I think the most important message from the Sora team is that their results suggest scaling video generation model is a promising path towards building general purpose simulator of the physical world. I personally am a strong believer in this direction. We will have two sessions on diffusion models today, one on image generation and one on video and 3D generation, delivered by Zhen Yuan Yang and Dr. Kevin Lin, respectively. Okay, so here is the agenda for today. I hope you like it. Without further ado, let's invite Dr. Chun Yuan Li to begin his talk. 